Welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Join us every Wednesday to learn about the latest cutting edge developments in the real time communications industry. ClueCon Weekly is brought to you by Free Switch Solutions. Get support and professional services directly from the creators of the Free Switch open source project, solving your issues in the most efficient, stable, and scalable way possible. Get the Free Switch advantage. Visit freeswitch.com. Also brought to you by ClueCon the premier technology conference for developers by developers. Join us every summer in Chicago. ClueCon kicks off on Monday with our annual hackathon, The Coder Games, followed by three days of technology-rich presentations discussing telecom, WebRTC, and IoT from developers around the world. To learn more, visit cluecon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. And welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Today is the 10th of October, 2018. And this week we're going to be joined by Sharendra Tiwari and, uh, from uh, Plebo. And he's going to be talking about some really cool stuff today. So uh, you guys stand by for that. Uh, before we get to that, though, we've got the Free Switch team is coming to us live from Astrocon. So let's go over to them. We're going to see what they've got going on. Abby, Tony, Mark, Ryan, everybody else. How's it going over there? It's going great. Thank you for asking. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on ClueCon Weekly. As always, if you have any questions during this call, please feel free to comment in the YouTube, HipChat, or IRC channels, and we will try to answer them during this call. And if you're watching us on YouTube right now, be sure to give us a share so that everyone can see it too. Well, we're in Orlando for AstroCon, and it's going really well so far. Uh, on Tuesday, Evan gave a talk on uh, Cloud RTC, and today, about an hour ago, Anthony gave everyone a good talk about how FreeSwitch is going and how people can use it. So things are going really well over here. A little bit rainy, but very warm, so that's nice. Um, so for everybody who's at AstroCon right now, you should definitely come find us at our FreeSwitch booth. And uh, come and say hi, and we'll we can talk to you about free switch or just chat. So be sure to stop by. Um, if you're at AstroCon, you can still see Evan McGee speak tomorrow um, at 10 a.m. in Osce in the Osceola room. Be sure to check out Evan. Uh, and if you're going to the happy hour tonight uh, at AstroCon, you should definitely come and find us because we're all going to be there, and we're bringing our very special. Cards Against Technology game. So definitely stop by and play with us. Yeah. All right. We're going to do our community corner. No, <laughs> <laughs> so we're here and it's Hurricane Michael. How cool is that? <laughs> um, so we have a question today from IRC, and that IRC question is from SA. Mike, this is for you. Is there an... <laughs> Maybe you can both answer. <laughs> and this question, is there an application to execute another application in sequence? All right. So it's, uh, it's kind of a vague question because it was just pulled out of IRC. Uh, I got later clarification. They were looking specifically for how to run multiple applications in order in an execute on variable. Now, if you don't know what execute on variables are, uh, there's a whole bunch of events that happen within free switch uh, where you can hook and run applications when they happen. You can execute on media. You can execute on answer. Hang up. Uh, which, back. On image. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, and the, the Confluence page on that has has a ton of uh, things. Uh, the problem with this is uh, execute on takes an application and argument. So if you wanted to run five or six things, um, that's not going to work out great. So there are a few ways to do it. Um, I'll go with the first and uh, probably easiest one is you can use execute extension um, as the application. And that will cause it to go into dial plan and execute. Uh, a full extension that it's an order list of things. There's a few other ways you want to talk about. Um, all of the execute on variables in free switch, you can suffix them with like zero one, zero two, or anything. It's arbitrary. Anything after them. So what what we look for is the prefix execute on, 
and and process those as we find variables set on the session that match that. So I'm in order by calling them one, two, three, four, and five, or whatever you want. Uh, and that would that should execute them in the order you set them as well. But um, most of the time, I, I tell people to set those and in the description of the suffix, say why you're setting them. It does give you an idea of why you set it. So, so I figure this is kind of a fun time to talk about other things in FreeSwitch that are kind of meta, where you can do things inside of things. And I didn't tell Brian about this, so he's going to hate me now. But <laughs> I, I, I want to go back and forth and see how many things we can come up with Probably where it's not. something inside of something. So I'm going to start with mod um, file string, which lets you call files inside of other files. Yes, and you can call, you can call Lua from Lua. I've seen. Um, you can you can call languages from other languages. That's actually <laughs> awesome, and I've seen that happen. <laughs> uh, what was the next one that I come up with? Uh, we have a whole list of kind of proxy endpoints. So the user endpoints can call other endpoints. Then on a related topic, we have API functions which return dial strings that you could use, like Sophia context. The hash can do that as well. Um, all of those API things are can, can do very, and you can nest them, like the conditional inside <laughs> of a, a, another conditional. Um, you could get kind of fancy. There's actually an example of this in the default vanilla config, where I do an execute on with a UUID git bar on the partner channel to get the ZRTP a sash string to display it with a display update to a polycom. It's a real one. It's commented out, but it's there if you really want to go look at it because it does get you, you got to unravel that one. It's not a simple one. All right, I've got a good one. You can use dynamic languages uh, such as Lua to create new API commands that call other API commands. You could also use Lua to create XML using the XML hook so that it generates dial plan directly and returns it to the core. All right, I'm tapping out of this. This is going to go on forever. <laughs> we All can right. keep going. Yeah, yeah, we can keep going. Here, here. It, it just turned into a very fun conversation yeah. there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Answers from the expert. So today we have Surendra Tawari. So Surendra, what do you have for us today? So first of all, I will say good morning. Might be it's, uh, early morning there, <laughs> and it's late night here. So today I'm going to have a ESL sockets with FreeSwitch and uh, that kind of like you are talking about executing the Lua other uh, kind of language using FreeSwitch and R. So I want to talk here how to execute uh, the commands outside the FreeSwitch, how to inspect FreeSwitch, what to do with calls and all. So basically I will start with myself like Myself, Surendra Tiwari, working for Pilio as a core voice developer. And uh, here in Pilio, we do a lot of good, good things like uh, API stuffs, SMS, message, and Gentung. So Gentung is basically trunking services. So right now, we are in private beta. We are still coming to GA uh, end of this year. So let me start with ESL. So what is event sockets in uh, phrases? So basically, I will say, uh, for example, you have uh, very less number of FreeSeed developers, but still you want to go for, uh, uh, you want to build something, but uh, uh, you don't have much uh, developers that know FreeSeed. So you just create the interface. Uh, those guys will write code in any language like Golang, C language, PHP, Python, XML. So for example, my call is coming to FreeSeed. And I'm forwarding that call to some way uh, event sockets might be accurate. And uh, th then uh, whatever you want to do with th that call, uh, that I mean, likewise, I want to uh, just insert whenever any call is coming, I want to insert that into Redis that this call came. And I want to modify that call that I want to send a particular playback file. So I will uh, get the playback file from uh, Redis that this file to be played. And uh, afterwards, uh, I will instruct FreeSys, uh, please play this file. So this is kind of event sockets we have. And uh, there are basically two kind of 
event sockets first is inbound event sockets and second is outbound event sockets so for inbound event sockets uh, your uh, event sockets things are client and freesys work as a server so you basically uh, connect with freesys as a client and you instruct with freesys instruct freesys as a command like for example uh, there are originate apis there so i will instruct freesys please uh, call to this number using particular segments of variables and uh, particular trunks and also after originate i can instruct other things also like execute on answer and other things like playback and all so this is inbound then if i think about outbound event socket then in that case i will uh, basically precis work as a client and other service work as a server so i will forward that call uh, from precis to other service so precis work as a server so any call is coming i will forward that call to so, uh, that so particular sockets and that sockets service as a running as a server so this is outbound event socket so basically uh, there is difference between inbound and outbound inbound means your application working as a client outbound means your application working as a server so now uses uh, the best uses right now we have uh, pilio.com as open source so using that uh, open source you can set up your own uh, api infra and all so uh, for example i can say if you want to set up your own infra and uh, you want to de develop something big on freesys then you don't want to write everything on xml dial plans and uh, executing the files fro from from uh, dial plans and all you want to write something outside the freesys you don't want to in uh, manage the things on freesys so basically uh, you will forward uh, that uh, call to other uh, other libraries then uh, that library will decide what to do with those calls so might be you will have multiple microservices for example whenever any call is coming i will park that call then park event will go to that your library might be uh, event socket uh, that is i'm considering as a inbound event socket then afterward then uh, you will find out okay this call is from this, this particular did let let me find out the particular account so you will find out the account then uh, you will find out particular product plan rating routing strategy and all and after everything you will uh, send uh, instruct the precis okay let's do route to this call to particular customer pbx and all so this kind of things we used to do with the esls so let me start with my demo so here this is my inbound sockets so basically i started with go and uh, using this particular library that is go redis and uh, that is for redis and uh, vma esl for uh, esl sockets so here i'm connecting to redis and uh, also forwarding the command to freesys so here i'm using bg api that is background background api with origin command and uh, i'm calling to one of the guy this is will be the callee and this will be the caller id so how this will work so this call is going and uh, i'm see going to connect with freesys afterwards call is made that bridge application so first call came to me then second call is going to another number that is bridge number see here we can see the logs and after answer uh, call is answered and uh, we are uh, playing moh channel uh, whatever then both guys started working at all yeah go is a great language yeah so go is a great language so it's nearby to c performance so and, and much easier you. as well yes so hard uh, what we are doing here basically uh, we are so 
we are sending which is a command event plane all it means uh, whatever events are there which is going to forward to this particular socket so this is the publish kind of stuff which will be publish all those event to this particular so socket and we have this uh, originate command originate command is basically uh, originating in a call to particular phone number and all so here i am using origin call id number so you can give any call id numbers so that will uh, populate to call is phone number that this is this particular call id you are getting the phone then i am saying uh, this particular codec string i am saying pcma pcuma then i am using particular gateway here i am defining clio genton gateway so there is this is global variable i am using this one genton gateway then uh, i'm calling to call id number the first call then after call is made then second call will go to another call that is from to call e so once this call is made we are getting the background job id then on uh, one, of the, one of the great features of go is, is how okay. it handles it. Want to talk about that a little bit right. okay so this is about one of the use case the second use case is uh, suppose you want to run a broad uh, sub election is are going on and you want to run like uh, trump is uh, good, did good work and uh, and trump want to uh, like uh, say some uh, yeah, i wave file to lot of guys like lot of leads then uh, in that case also you can use so in that case i also created one uh, demo for this okay. Yeah, there's so much stuff you could do with sockets. Yes, you can do a uh, lot of stuff with sockets. So here. So, so tell us a little bit about the, the Go compilation process. So again, I put one, one, of, one of the numbers. Now it's going to check in Redis and it's more making call and particular file will get played. So this kind of things you, also, you can also do with the phrases, ESLs. So this is all about inbound ESL sockets. And uh, when we talk about outbound ESL sockets, then you need to write particular sockets. Uh, like in extension, in uh, dial plan, you need to write this particular socket one, uh, like I will say. So every call will go to this particular server and he will handle those calls there. Okay, uh, so this is all about inbound and outbound sockets. So now use it. There are a lot of companies are using. Uh, Plio, of course, uh, using in, uh, inbound sockets. Nexmo. Studio and many more companies, message birds. So that's all about inbound sockets. So tell us more. Okay. So uh, let me think about other uses. So, for example, you want to create some trunking services and uh, you created some trunk. And uh, you want to check trunk belongs to which account and how many how much CPS CC is there. So you must your first call will come to Freesys. Then uh, Freesys will forward that call to your outbound socket. And after outbound socket, outbound socket will speak to your uh, trunk service. Then trunk service will find out that this trunk belongs to this particular account. Then after trunk service, it will go to rating service. We'll find out what are rates, rates plans are there. Then after uh, rating service, it might find out which uh, routing service there you can do LCR and LRN, of course. So after uh, LCR, LRN, the call will route to particular, uh, you can go uh, have some kind of SIP proxy between freezes and carriers. Then uh, call will made and they you can retry and all. So this is all about inbound sockets and outbound sockets.
So tell us a little bit something. Tell us a little bit more about Go. Okay. So about Go. Go is so popular, and uh, previously in C language, you need to manage the memory management. Like you need to uh, understand malloc, calloc, realloc, and uh, free. But uh, in Go, Go language, you don't need to manage the memory management and all. And uh, so basically, uh, Go language is uh, nearby to system programming language, and uh, you can do lot of stuff there. And you uh, basically uh, Go language. You're going to execute, and it's a totally binary language, and uh, concurrency management, Go routines, and lot of stuff you, you can do with concurrency Go. management. Is probably one of the best features, right? When you're dealing with something like ESL. Yes, yes, sir. So there, you need to uh, be careful, like how many uh, uh, Go routines you need to start with, because uh, your ESLs are basically are bound to CPU resource, CPU and uh, I/O. Bound resources, and uh, so calling is pretty good in terms of voice communication. All so I might go uh, prefer Go language, but still you can use other languages like Erlang, Lua. Lua is also pretty good, but you will find a uh, couple of differences. Lua is interpretive language, but still uh, you can execute Lua with the uh, Camellio phrases at all. Cool. So how long have you been doing this? From last five years. So you've been you've been programming in Go for for the past five years. That's cool. No, no, no. It's not, it's like last one year I'm programming with Go. So I'm basically C developer, uh, C C plus plus. So finding Go is like bit modern and bit okay. So what, what other examples do you have for us? I, it seemed like you had a whole bunch of Go files. Let's take a look at some of those. Okay, so for example, you want to, so there is one of the project that is machinery. Have you heard about machinery? No, I'm not familiar with it. Tell me about it. Okay, so this is kind of uh, Python salary. So there you can uh, have worker kind of stuff. You can post the job to machinery. And machinery will uh, have multiple workers. Then uh, they will process uh, those jobs and uh, will uh, uh, store those results. So that kind of stuffs you can do with uh, Go language. And uh, if you want to have your own, I mean uh, anything you can do with the Go language, whatever you can do with uh, C. So system language, uh, I mean you can uh, write your own compiler in Go language. Even uh, broad broadcasting softwares, call centers, and uh, trunking services, and uh, API stuffs and all. So everything you can write in Go language. So there is a subtle difference between Go language and, API and C language. So basically, in terms of uh, system programming, when it comes, so it's quite good to use C. But in terms of API, it's uh, too much good to use Go language because uh, it's too much difficult to write APIs in C. And here you will find a lot of uh, things like uh, already made, like Eco Framework is there. Using Eco Framework, you can write, uh, you can define your own routers, controllers, and uh, yeah, there's some really good projects that do that. Really yes. interesting. So that kind of stuff you can do, and uh, so I, I mean everything you can do. So they <laughs> say. The that, I, I heard someone mention in passing that you know Go is a potential replacement for C. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, Go is potential replacement of C because uh, you will you can write anything in a for session programming, and it's also binary. So C also generate binary. And uh, Go also generate binary. And even uh, no need to manage a lot of things here. You you have package management, not uh, but you don't have uh, package management in C. You have uh, root Go routines, but you don't have uh, kind of concurrency in C. You can have th threads, but th those are po POSIX threads in uh, C. And uh, C 
you need to follow follow uh, like modular function approach the structures yeah. are very different right yes so uh, still i mean uh, wo lot of things are good concurrency management is good package management is good and uh, memory management quite good and uh, you can do lot of steps uh, without knowing too much and lot of uh, github modules are also available in go uh, not like c and you can reuse those modules in other repos and all so go it's quite good closely, it's very tone closely bonded into the us or tie or by or tied into the operating system and that's a really great feature for it too yes yes So how you are using Go? Okay, uh, let me think about how you are using Go in your uh, 3C systems and all. Are you trying to go use Go uh, instead of uh, C? No, free switch is off C. Okay, so uh, are you planning any uh, modules write uh, in Go language instead of C? Because right now we need to write uh, modules in C or C++ in free C. So are you planning to write uh, trying to give me any I think, I think that's a question that I think there's a question that would best be served as ask to Tony um, but just you know I, I think that free switch is such a mature project at this point that you know to go and try to you know refactor something and go would be a monumental undertaking I think about all the time that you know the core developers have spent you know uh, and <laughs> it's only a day, almost a decade you know, writing code endless nights. I mean, we all, we all kind of know what it's like, right? But they actually put together an unbelievable code base. And so I, I don't think that, you know, that's something that could be. Okay. So uh, what makes this difference? Like, for example, I write a uh, Golang module in Physis. I compile that. So after that, it should be same, like uh, C, C modules after compilation, right? Or it might be after execution oh you mean like doing something like mongo yes hello do that again michael we could barely hear you yeah the, the, the conference room is actually really filling up okay so it's very it's actually exceptionally hard to hear you okay so <laughs> So th things are there. I'm saying that uh, if we write modules in uh, FreeSys in Go language and uh, after uh, make and make install, it should work same as a C language, right? Well, I, I don't know if it would work the same in C or not because of the difference in threading and the difference in interthread. Uh, you know, the way that Go uses kind of uh, a pipe type thing for communicating between threads, where uh, FreeSwitch really uses a bunch of hash tables and a bunch of other things to pass data around between the threads on the event bus. I mean, it would be an interesting kind of thing, but there's no reason that you couldn't, I don't think that you couldn't write extensions for FreeSwitch in Go uh, because you can extend C in Go or you can use C libraries in Go. So that, that, there could be some interesting things there. Um, but I think what Mike, uh, I think one of the other things Mike was trying to ask you, Sharenda, do you have any examples of some of the C applications that you guys are using over there that you can show off? Okay, okay so, so here, here basically, hello. So here basically, here, I think uh, my voice is getting echo. Yeah, I think my echo can died. Okay. So here basically we are using Python for ESLs and a uh, lot of things are running in Python but some uh, our middleware and microservices are running on Colang and uh, we also have some custom models in FreeSys. So those are basically to get it uh, done fast way. Uh, so likewise we are using, we are using mix up of Lua, uh, Go language, Python and see so it depends on how, how you we want to for example lot of things we can't do with c if we are going to write complete esl things in c then it will take lot of effort lot of effort to maintain and all 
but we uh, right now we are using in python and we might be going to rewrite in go language because uh, maintenance in if we think about maintenance then it's easy to maintain in go language or python and all but not easy to maintain c c is always good in terms of performance we can write all our modules in uh, fetches and uh, use those modules so that kind of stuff we are doing here Cool. So, um, so I, I get mostly Python uh, and for doing all that good stuff. But have you guys? Uh, so with Go, it sounds like you're a fan of Go. Is that an accurate statement? Yes, I'm okay. a bit fan of Go. Basically, right now uh, we are. I'm a part of Gentung team. So most of the things are in Go language. We are not using Python because we find out that. Performance wise, Go is super cool. If the Go can manage the socket uh, interface very easily. We found a lo lot of issues with Python, like uh, there is a socket is not getting closed, even if uh, socket is expired and all. Uh, but Go can manage that very good ways. Uh, Go can have like no, it sound no, libraries for uh, socket management and all. So, in terms of Memory management, socket. Um, I mean TCP uh, and IP interface and all. Go is quite good. Uh, here we are using GoLang and uh, Lua also with Camellio also. So Camellio is like uh, we are using uh, App and uh, App Lua interface. So everything is in Lua now. No native language and at all. So we are just uh, calling the Lua interface using uh, App and Lua, and uh, everything is on working. And uh, we are using FreeSys as a media server, so media server with ESLs, and we have been using for FreeSys for uh, transporting also. So transporting is happening on uh, FreeSys. So that kind of setup uh, might be everybody. Everybody have not me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, I want to ask you. Um... Uh, have you done any of the threading model with Go and use their threading for uh, for scalability purposes? Because I, you know, um, it's been there's been like a trend for a lot of people to start writing things in uh, you know stuff like Node.js and Node.js is single threaded. It's got uh, it's got it's got some cool features, uh, but then it's got some other pains like uh, you know in JavaScript you really can't do just a blocking call. You have to jump through hurdles, you know, do things like do a promise and then do a call and then let the promise kind of do its thing until you're ready for a callback and all kinds of other fun stuff. You can't just say, hey, give me my configuration and I'll, I'm going to wait right here until I get my config. But you can do some of those things in Go. Um, and also in Go, you get the whole multi-threaded thing where you don't get that in Node.js or where in stuff like Node.js, you have to run 12 copies of Node you know, to actually use all 12 cores on your machine. Um, have you played with the multi-threaded stuff in Go? And uh, and what are your thoughts on that kind of thing? Yeah, right now I'm uh, working one of the open source uh, things. So right now I'm writing one of the open source. In that, uh, I'm using the Go routines. For example, I have like 10 campaigns to run. So mm -hmm. I'm running those campaigns in every uh, different, different Go routines. So every campaign have a different, different CPS and different, different IBR files and uh, different caller ID, every, I mean properties of every campaign are different. So running in a different camp, uh, Go routines because uh, I need to, for example, I mean, one campaign support 5 CPS, another campaign 10 CPS, another campaign 30 CPS. So I need to make sleeves and all. So different different Go routines are using. And even uh, there is like subtle, uh, there is good way. You can like uh, use CPU resources. For example, the 10 Go routines, 4 is CPU resources. If Five routines are in sleep state. Still, uh, three routines can use all four cores. Right. Yeah. So that yeah. kind of stuff people do. Right. Yeah. So one one of the cool things about Go routines is the way that uh, you know you can communicate between the parent and the child. It gives you uh, a mechanism for doing that. That's really just, uh, uh, for lack of a better description, it's kind of like a named pipe. Uh, you can just put stuff in it, and it pops out on the other end. Um, uh, have you uh, come? Uh, so there was some work in Go early on about making that IP enabled, so you could have it running on different servers. Have you played with anything like that in Go, or have you worked with uh, you know a replacement for that in Go where you can do that 
across multiple servers. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, we know where you work for your day job, so you guys have to deal with a lot of calling. So, um, you know, that, that horizontal scalability is something that you guys probably got to deal with. And I'm just wondering if, uh, how you guys address that uh, with something like that. Right now, we didn't address that thing, but uh, as you said, we need to address. So we will think about and we will come up with plans and. Cool. All right. Well, uh, anything else you want to talk about today, Sharendra? Okay. So I, like we already talked, like Go is quite good and inbound so sockets and outbound sockets, how to use inbound sockets, how to use outbound sockets. There are like, multiple scenarios you can use. Like you can have your own uh, camp, uh, campaign runner. You can have call center APIs and all, every APIs. Uh, and uh, you can do anything with FreeSys. You can fire the commands outside the FreeSys. Even if you don't have FreeSys knowledge, uh, just have FreeSys set up and forward that call to your uh, socket library that can be inbound or that can be outbound and uh, make a modification to your call center. Well, uh, Surinder, I want to say thanks for coming out and joining us today. Uh, we, we pretty much lost the other guys because they're, they're at AstraCon. <laughs> And uh, the room they were using was overrun with Astrocon attendees. Uh, so they were got, they literally got to the point where they couldn't hear us and they were just getting flooded with uh, background noise. Uh, so uh, they passed their thanks on also to you today for joining us. And uh, so uh, thank you very much uh, for coming in. Uh, for you guys, uh, check out uh, Pluvo. They do some cool stuff over there. Uh, and uh, also don't forget uh, our sponsor, SignalWire. Uh, they're at AstroCon, so if you're there at AstroCon, go find Anthony, Mike, Brian, Karen, uh, the whole rest of the crew, and uh, you can find out what they've been working on, and uh, you can also find out about FreeSwitch there at the SignalWire booth. Uh, again, thanks, everybody, for joining us this week. This week. Uh, Sorinda, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Now, where's my command at? If I can find the right one. You've been watching KluCon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central. Keep up with the latest happenings by subscribing to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or visit us at freeswitch.com.